there beauty beaters this video today is about how to PR and market your brand when you have zero to spend on PR and marketing how you can get your brand seen and heard and you can cut through in a busy and cluttered and loud market when you don't have any dollars to invest when you are competing against the likes of the legacy brands and the big boys who've got endless pots of cash they've got big fat marketing teams and PR teams that spend all day um, championing their brands and they've got money to spend on advertising celebrity influencers ambassadors paid for sponsorship all of that stuff you definitely can compete I have spent two decades building brands from the bottom up uh, most of them have had zero to spend on marketing so I am going to share all of my knowledge with you today so that you can take that into your business and get your brand out there and get it seen here's how let's crack on most brands in most markets are obsessed with personalization and giving the customer a really customized um, experience with their product, on their websites, in their stores and whatnot. What they're less focused on and what they really should be focused on and where you can really own it and win is on personalizing your customer service. And by that, I mean you as the person behind the brand actually being in contact with your customers. Because if you think about it, if you're, say, I don't know, uh, Joe Malone, say, let's just say, Joe's not really speaking to her customers because she's owned by the Estee Lauder Group now and she has a P PR team, I'm sure, of at least three full-time people. So it's not really possible for Joe to have that connection with her customers anymore. But you can. And it's really that that's going to help you to stand out and to be seen. Customers appreciate being seen and being heard and being listened to. They also appreciate being asked questions. You can go out to your customers and say something like, oh, I've got a new product launching um, in the next two weeks. We can't decide if we like the green packaging or the black packaging. What do you think, guys? and get them to vote for it. So by the time you actually come to launch that product, your customers are already heavily invested in it and they feel like they're part of it and part of your brand. Other areas of customization and personalization of your customer service could be in sending them a birthday card through the post when it's their birthdays. Most of us don't get post anymore and I know I definitely miss it and when the postman comes I'm still excited, um, despite the fact that it's never for me. <laughs> it's always books turning up for my husband but still I live in hope we all have a letter a letter if you know your customer has moved house because they've changed their details um, in your database or whatnot how about a moving in card just really inexpensive but thoughtful touches that will really hyper personalize your service and will really ramp up your engagement with your customer and in no way can big brands despite how much budget they've got, how much money they've got at their fingertips, can compete with that. They will be using bots and automated services because it's more economical and it serves their bottom line more. You can be much smarter. It's definitely one of the best ways to win. A major way that you can really stand out and win against competitors is to show your personality, to really let your customer see who you are and what you believe in. Customers connect with people, not with brands. They want to know who you are, who your, what your core values are, what you believe in. And you know, if you've got personality that is quite fun, go-getter-ish, that you like to try new things, inject that into your brand, inject that into your storytelling and your social um, media channels and on your website and all of those things because it will help you stand out and connect with your customer. They want to see who you are because if they're shopping with, say, John Frieda, um, they're never getting that connection with John because John hasn't been with the brand for at least five years. So that brand is speaking to them in a very sort of distant relative way. You can speak to them in a friend to friend, woman to woman, man to woman, whatever it is way. You can really create a personal connection. So don't be afraid to let your personality shine through. You know, it could be that you're into something like you're really, I don't know, an activist and you love, you know, it's really important to you that you stand up um, 
and march if there's something that you believe in and you know that you really put yourself out there and it's important to who you are it may not be hyper relevant to your brand but it could be relevant to your consumer so really think about injecting your personality injecting who you are into your storytelling and into your and into your brand and it will definitely reap rewards because the big brands they just can't compete with that Another way that you can really win is through your agility. Because you are a small brand with less layers to your organisation, perhaps it's just you by yourself, like it is for me at Beauty Beat, um, no shame. <laughs> you don't have to um, go through processes to get things approved. If you work at a big organisation, your influencer calendar or your marketing calendar or even your social posts and what you're going to post on Monday or Tuesday or blah blah blah, it's already stretched out for you in advance. It's already worked out so that in advance so that it can get approved. Which means that if something comes up in the news, you can't piggyback on it and you can't move fast to respond to it, even if it's hyper relevant to your business because um, you're sticking to the schedule. And if you want to go off schedule, that requires a meeting and approvals. And usually it's not approvals with one person. It can be between two or three and particularly as well with legal, um, with uh, Instagram posting and social posting, it has to go through a legal process. And legal people in corporate organisations are looking for one thing, and that is a reason for you not to post, and they will find it. So you, with your agility as a small business and your, um, your the fact that you're going to take risks and be bold, like we talked about earlier, you can respond to the news agenda, you can piggyback on what's trending that morning. If some big famous person has just had a bob and that's the speciality of your hair salon, or if uh, another celebrity has been seen drinking a red wine that you stock at your restaurant, you can capitalise on that straight away and you can do it super, super fast. And that is where you will be able to create the distance between yourself and the big brands because you will be modern and you will be relevant and you will be up to date. So go for it. So my final PR tip for you to help you stand out against big brands with the big budgets is to really use and appreciate your coolness, your uniqueness, and the fact that you can really leverage discovery to get yourself out there. L'Oreal can't do that, Estee Lauder can't do that, Tesco's can't do that, Audi can't do that, None, Mercedes can't do that. We all know those brands, they're institutionalised, we all, we all know them, but nobody knows you yet. You're a discovery brand and everyone wants to discover a brand. Everyone wants to be the first person to know about something. So really use that to your advantage and really think about that in your storytelling, in the people that you approach, the language that you use, the hashtags that you use. Cool, unique, niche brand. That is what you are and that is what you should be leveraging and that will really help you to stand out when you're competing without all of the cash to invest in marketing. So that is it from me today. I hope you found that super useful. I have downloaded and transcribed or whatever the appropriate term is and um, everything that I've just talked about and I've posted it on my website beautybeat.co forward slash freebie where you can download everything I've talked about and hopefully put some of these things into action yourself and to really help you know you to stand out and be seen which you deserve to be and which you can if you really believe that you can and if you really put in to process the actions that I've just talked about. Thank you very much. See you next time.